Bird Brain, and today we are still talking about particles. So last week we got introduced about like how this series was gonna go and what we're gonna learn and stuff. But today let's get into the meat of things and dive into our particle system. So first go to your node library, into the particle section, into example. You're gonna find basic particle system. That's what you wanna use for this tutorial. This is the most basic particle system you can have. From the get-go, what usually scare people off from particles are the colors. Like, like what's going on with these? Like, you know, in Harmony, usually we have like three colors. You have green for transformation node, light blue for element, and dark blue for effects. Now, particle system, it's like a tiny little rainbow party out there. So many cool colors. And now, trust me, once you understand what these colors do, everything becomes insanely easier. So let's start from the top. Here you have seafoam green. Everything that is in seafoam green is the regions. Now you can have 2D regions and you can have 3D regions. They are super easy to use. So first my planner region here is set to rectangle. So I have a rectangle shape of particles. But if I go here and I change it, you can have many different kinds of particles. All right, we're gonna see that into the next video. If you wanna edit the way the shape looks, you can also click on your region. You can go to show control. And this is going to make a box appear that you can like change using the transform tool. Be careful, this is gonna put keyframes on your timeline, by the way. So this is for like the 2D region, but you also have a 3D region, also seafoam green, and this is just going to make your shape uh, 3D. Ooh, that's cool. Then what we have are the pink nodes, and trust me, they're pink, they're not purple, because like this is purple, and if you put them side by side, you know they're not exactly the same color. All right, thank you. Uh, the pink nodes, I like to separate them in two. You have the regular pink nodes, which are a modifier, and you have the sprite meter, which is its own deal, okay? It's three tabs of nonsense <laughs> that we have to unfold, okay? Usually the other pink modifiers, they're very simple. They're gonna be like one little window with very specific jobs, okay? So the sprite meter is what creates your particle, and all the other pink nodes, such as move particles, gravity, velocity, kill, Think all of these are made to modify your sprite emitter, right? So now if I make my scene play, my particles are just there. And then if I want them to fall down, maybe I can get a gravity node. And you know, I'm used to it, so I kind of know by heart what they are, so I can find them here. But if you're not used to it, you can also go into your node library and in modifier, they're all here. All the little modifiers for your particles. So now that I set my gravity here, my particles are gonna fall. Yay! And then you have the three nodes here. So you have blue, yellow, and purple. You know, it's purple, it's not pink. This is pink, this is purple. These three nodes are really important. Uh, the particle system composite basically just allows you to have multiple modifiers uh, together. Because if you try to just unite them under a regular composite, it's not gonna work. It just goes through, it, it's not working. Because as I said, particles exist in their own dimension, then they're not really into our world, right? So you have to process them before you connect them to a composite. So the particle system composite is really simple. You have nothing to affect in it. It's really just there to hold all your modifiers. So, you know, that's pretty easy. So this is a particle system composite. It's basically like a composite, but for particles. Because you have to understand that particles are like from a different dimension. <laughs> if you want them to exist in the real world, you need a particle visualizer to kind of process them. Think of it like the silk cope from Pokemon. You know, allowing you to see the ghost. Yeah. So the particle visualizer is like the final step of your particles. Um, if you go there, no matter what your particles look like, you can also force them to render as dot. And uh, this is usually the only thing I use it for, so great! <laughs> uh, the rest of the things, you might use them, but it's very more precise and you can just discover this as you get more used with particles. So for now, all I use it for is to render my thing as dot if I have like very heavy images instead of dots. Your computer might not like the images, so you can also force render as dots temporarily just to see your movement, which is great. And then you have the particle baker. The particle baker is basically responsible for like your pre-roll. So you can go here and if you want your particle system to start before, like if you have rain, for example, you don't want the rain to start falling in your scene. You want to get into your scene and there's already rain. So you can pre-roll your effect so that the rain is already starting to fall. You can also change a couple of other, other things as you get more used to it. And one thing I can't stress enough, set a maximum number of particles. Because if you don't, your particles are just going to keep appearing and appearing and your computer is going to hate you. So if you see that your computer is struggling, you can also edit the maximum number of particles. No matter how many particles this parameter wants to create, the particle baker has the last word. Just like the particle visualizer. If your sprite emitter says that your particles are leaves, but your particle visualizer says that no, no, they're rendering as dots, then they are rendering as dots. So these two right here are the final words of your particle system. And I know that Stylus Rumble in her video, she said that it's a bit silly that they're all separated, but it's actually not, and it's very important for them to be separated. 
because in some parts you're gonna need a certain particle visualizer sometimes you're gonna need a baker you can kind of unite them for some system and sometimes you can kind of save these in your library so that you can reuse your bakers for multiple effects but you don't necessarily want to keep the same visualizer so it's it's great to be able to kind of uh, separate them so that you can actually use them and sometimes the same system is going to use multiple visualizer and baker because you can kind of connect them like this doop, doop, like this and sometimes one visualizer is gonna have one peg and the other one is gonna have another peg um, but sometimes you want them to have the same baker but different visualizer and you know so it's important to have them separated when you do more advanced particling but honestly for what we do you won't need to dive into these often and that's it for today. So next week, we're going to dive into the sprite emitter. So see you next week. Bye-bye. Bibu. Turn it back. Bibu. 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 Turn it back. Turn it back, Bibu. Oh, Bibu. Bibu.